You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Today, all across the United States, we are stuffing our faces, watching football games, parades, dog beauty pageants, because that's a that's a thing for some reason, all in the name of Thanksgiving, which begs the question, as geeks, what are you thankful for right now? This is Systematic Geekology, the Thanksgiving Day Super Spectacular episode. If it was a comic book, it would be 80 pages long with a variant cover by Jim Steranko. We are we are the priests to the geeks, meaning that we are mediators between culture and the Christian faith. This is not a bait and switch. It's not a Trojan horse. But you know what it will be? It will most likely be a cornucopia of Thanksgiving related puns at the rate this is going. I am doing my best to crack up Joe right now. Um, which, by the way, if you enjoy listening to us yammer on, you should head on over to patreon.com slash systematic geekology, where you can get more great content. I am one of your hosts for today's episode, Brandon Knight. I'm a bivocational Christian content creator who is so happy right now that round one of the holiday season is done. I work at a grocery store. I'm glad it's over. Um, and in my the little bit of free time and energy I have had in the evenings, Joe, I have been reading a biography on Will Eisner. It focuses more so on his art, evolution of his art and his career than anything else. But it's been really enjoyable so far. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so my name is Joe. I am a marketer, broadcaster, uh, jack of many trades. Um, in my free time right now, I have been reading a book that is about um, basically the history of comics and how different trends have evolved from the 30s and then through different versions, you know, pre superhero uh, comics. It's very interesting to see a time where, you know, as as comic book fans, we are so attuned. You hear comics, you think superheroes, you think guys in capes. Um, but there was a whole world of comics well before superheroes were in vogue. Yeah, that's true. I uh, actually have over here to my left here, Joe, I don't think you can see it my camera, but I have it's a, a newspaper comic strip from 1919. It is old and I don't ever plan on taking it out of the nice case, but it was at the uh, my local antique store. It was like 30 bucks. But yeah, it goes to show you this has nothing to do with superheroes at all. It's just like some comedy story thing. It's fun. Yeah, there's a whole world, whole world out there beyond superheroes. All right. So again, today uh, we are going to discuss as geeks, what are we thankful for right now? And we're also going to look a little bit ahead into 2022. Some of the things that we are excited for that is on the horizon. The nice thing about the holiday of Thanksgiving is that with its placement right here near the end of the year, it really does invite us to reflect, to look back, to see these moments that even though, hey, we're still kind of living during a pandemic, life isn't good at times, the sin nature continues, but you know what? There are still moments to be thankful. So Joe, let's go over to you. Get us started on here. What are some things we have had, I think, a bounteous year of geek content. What has been some of your highlights, some of the things that you've been thankful for this year? You know, one of the things I couldn't help but think about in, in preparing for this episode that I am thankful for coming out of this year is the fact that we live in a time where it is socially acceptable to be able to sit here on a geek related podcast, expect anybody to listen, expect this to be part of the cultural zeitgeist and every that's just normal life. Yeah. You know, I absolutely remember a time where you were a pariah for liking this kind of stuff. This was not this was you, this was not something that was openly talked about, let alone looking at 
you know, I was looking ahead to all of the stuff that's coming out next year. And there's mm-hmm. something like seven or eight different comic book movies that are coming out next year. Really? It's insane. Like, I don't know if all of the, if any of them have been pushed back with all of the ridiculousness of the world and all of that kind of stuff. But there is an insane amount of either comic or geek related movies coming out. And that's just kind of the norm. So that's something yeah. that I am incredibly um, thankful for. One of my so two of my f- favorite geek um, subgenres are comics, and I am a huge Power Rangers fan. Have been since I was a kid. Really? All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, Boom Studios this year has been and even before this year but really this year has been lighting the world on fire with their run of power rangers and everything that they've done since the lord draken arc and bringing um you know bringing a sense of gravity to something that a lot of people just kind of cast off as as kid as a kid show i think it's the same Mm -hmm. the same deal it's it's the interesting dichotomy between TMNT and Power Rangers. They were mm-hmm. real they had their heyday in a very similar time frame, but yeah. when you dating back, TMNT was always more willing to get adult, to get dark, to get more edgy, sure. to get all of those kinds of things. Whereas, like I said, Power Rangers has always kind of had this idea of being a kid show, you know, not really mm-hmm. having high stakes to it and all of that kind of stuff. That 100% changed with okay. Boom Studios run on, on Power Rangers. And, you know, you have these characters that have been around for decades now. It's very hard to breathe any kind of significant new life into characters that have such a long standing history to them, sure. but they were able to successfully do it. Uh, one, I, I've got a number of different things that I'm thankful for. I'll run down a couple of them now. I'm thankful for the Snyder verse for the, yeah. for the uh, Zack Snyder justice league. Um, I do think it was a little long still. This is kind of a retroactive. We didn't, we weren't around back when this when that movie came out. Uh, I do think it was a little long, but you know what? If the point was, hey, we're sorry for this thing that Joss Whedon put out that he claims is a movie. If if the point is saying we're sorry, then apology accepted. I I, I popped hard for the Martian Manhunter scene. So, oh, one hundred percent. So I saw the original Joss Whedon Justice League on like a, a deluxe home theater setup. Like I saw it, oh, wow. how it was intended to be seen. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching this thing and I'm like, there's, there's explosions. There's this, there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And I'm like, okay, this is a little kid took all of the toy box toys out of the toy box, dumped them all on the floor and just incoherently is smashing them together. That's all this movie <laughs> is. Yeah. And like, is is the the Snyder verse, you know, maybe a little bit dark for certain for certain comic book fans, like it, certain types of comic book fans? Sure. I could see how that's an argument. Uh, I would agree that it is a, a smidge on the long side. But mm-hmm. talk about just gorgeous and more True. coherent and an actual storyline with the mm-hmm. Snyderverse version. Like it is, you know, is it perfect? No. But is it head and shoulders, light years better than Joss Whedon's version? Oh, yeah. 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah, I felt invested in the Flash and Cyborg and all these other characters that he ripped apart. And, you know, Batman made a lot more sense. I don't think Joss Whedon knows anything about Batman from how he anyway, we're we're, that's let's get back on track. Uh, Other things I am thankful for. um, WandaVision, man, that show, that was a special event to not be missed. But also during that time period, my wife and I had covid. And Mm. she has asthma and anxiety. So she got it hard and there were some dark nights and 
the road to recovery was long and between friends bringing us gro- friends and family bringing us groceries and Starbucks and meals and gluten-free Oreos one of the other shining lights in all of that was that show because it was so fun and so engaging and I don't care about all the people who are like yeah but all these rumors didn't happen you know what that was part of the fun was the speculation I agree. OK, I'm so glad somebody put lyrics to that. <laughs> I I understand. Like, I feel like I, I feel like how most people felt about WandaVision is exactly how I feel about this new Spider-Man trailer. I think people just need to stop and watch the mo- wait until, until the movie comes out. I'm so sick and okay. tired of hearing it might be this. It might be that. These people <laughs> might be in it. This might be that. Like, yeah. OK, just stop and watch the movie. But to me with WandaVision and maybe it's because it was the first of its kind in a major way guessing and looking and it like Mm -hmm. what that's what a show is supposed to do it's supposed to keep you invested and asking questions and making guesses and all of those kinds of things all right um another thing i know i've kind of uh identified myself as the dc guy the tolkien guy here on the show but y'all my first and deepest love in geek culture is professional wrestling i've got my wwe bailey t-shirt on right now ding dong hello and aew all out this year was the greatest pay-per-view i've ever watched it was Everything that you would want in a good wrestling show. Surprise debuts, in-ring returns, fantastic matches, title changes. Finally, they put the belts on the Lucha Bros. That should have happened like night one, in my opinion. But that was that was a fantastic show. OK, so taking a little bit of a trip down memory lane for AEW. One of their first major angles was MJF winning the diamond ring. And there is this promo segment that he had with, I believe it was Chris Jericho and I'm watching this. And this is after a, a very uh, long period of being away from professional wrestling because I cannot stand the WWE product. So I just stopped watching. And then I heard about this new startup and I'm watching it and I'm like, this is exactly why I became a fan in the first place. Mm -hmm. This kind of this kind of stuff right here is exactly and I'm watching the Lucha Bros match at all out this year. (laughs) And I'm watching them go, dude, they had me hooked like a mark. I'm like when during oh yeah spot during that that one super kick spot, I'm like, are you serious? We're they're they're really not gonna pull the trigger and they're not gonna put the titles on the Lucha Bros. Dude, it totally had it totally had me hooked that that, that was yeah. the end. And for somebody that has been a fan for as long as I have, and I think you can you can relate to this, yeah. those whole that whole false finish thing is not really like that kind of missed me with a lot of that. Like 87 mm-hmm. false finishes in a single match oh, yeah, yeah. is is much. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't necessarily agree with every booking decision that AEW has done. Uh, but there are definitely instances where they have taken an overlooked thing and are using it well yeah. and i love mm-hmm. orange cassidy and i love orange yeah. cassidy <laughs> so i orange cassidy is one of those is one of those characters that i get that he resonates with people and it's not horribly uh-huh. offensive i'm not one of those people that's like oh it's killing the business i'm not jim Cornette. jim Cornette. Uh, <laughs> but i i don't i i it's not necessarily i feel like i'm just a just a smidge too old to really okay. resonate with his character you know what i mean but mm-hmm. like it's just the fact that there's a product out there that it's not all just the same regurgitated thing over yep. and over yeah. and over again and it's it, there is you know that flavor of something for everybody that's what mm-hmm. made me a nitro kid back in the day because you oh, had yeah. the luchadors you had the old guys you had the in between guys and so mm-hmm. on and so forth here's a question for you looking okay. ahead to what we could be looking forward to aj styles to aew question mark 
I so there's plenty of time for WWE to release more people this year Um, because that just seems to be like Vince McMahon's hobby now. Take up stamp collecting, bro. Um, I think AJ, at least at this point, is still too high profile for them. I think he would go if WWE did release him. I think he would sign with AEW for sure. Right. Um, But I think. I think by the end of the year, Ricochet will be a free agent and we will see Ricochet in AEW by the end of 2022. I certainly hope so. I think he's he's one of those guys that just is so insanely athletic that I think and he's a good storyteller, like as Prince Mm -hmm. Puma in in Lucha Underground, he he carried that product for a hot minute. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? That's the thing that really Mm -hmm. put, nobody really knew who Ricochet was before being Prince Puma. And that really put him on the map in a lot of ways. So I would be very excited to see him be able to tell stories to me. Mm -hmm. I would love to see if I'm fantasy booking here for a minute, I would love Mm -hmm to see Moose versus Ricochet for the title. Because I think oh. that you, he's one of the, I think Ricochet is one of the few guys at that size that mm-hmm. you take somebody like Moose, who's a very credible mm-hmm. champion, and you oh, yeah. could really develop that almost Rey Mysterio-esque giant slayer sure. sort of character around him that I could sure. see him taking the title off of Moose in a in a very believable sort of way. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, man, I love Lucha Underground. It, oh, it that brought so many awesome. It brought so many great wrestlers. That, that was the last thing I wanted to say on that subject. Is there anything else from this year that you are thankful for, Joe, that you before we start looking forward into 2022? Yeah, so um, I it, it's not new to this year, but I'm finding okay. um, I finally watched through uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Oh. Well, we're we're in the process of, of watching through right. Next Generation. And I uh, yes, historically it is panned by a lot of Christians because of the because of Gene Roddenberry being a raging athe- atheist um, and okay. very much going out of his way to not have religion in the show. But okay. for somebody like me who is a former transhumanist, seeing the depiction of society furthering itself, seeing a society that is more focused on bettering itself than the accumulation of things and stuff really is awesome to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of my favorite aspects of watching next generation. You know what I mean? Okay. Nice. Um, And the last thing that I wanted to, that I wanted to mention was uh, another comic. Um, Mm -hmm. The last, the last Ronin. But it's a it is a oh. uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, comic yeah. following. I won't tell you which one it is, but the last surviving turtle. Uh, OK, and he's it, it go, it's like this almost like Dark Knight Returns sort of thing. OK, and like, yeah, yeah. While that sort of setting can get old, the way that they do it is so reminiscent of the 80s cartoon, but like okay. aged up to being like the older version of that character and to see what they do with these different characters and how they're not afraid to do what needs to be done in order to really set that world up is just out of bounds. Really some of, some of the best storytelling and it's, it's a breath of fresh air because for somebody like me, who's so into comics and so being put off, by what the big two have been putting out this year. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to have other titles telling good stories. You know what I mean? Because I think that's, you know, they're so they're so agenda filled at the big two Mm -hmm. that outside Mm -hmm. of like the X-Men. And that's fascinating to me that I'm saying that about the X-Men, that they're not the most agenda filled comic book on the scene right now. That's true. (laughs) Uh, 
that that outside outside of like some random stuff there's not really much storytelling that's happening it's just hey mm-hmm. big flashy concept hey inclusion thing hey socially woke yeah. thing all of that kind of stuff all thrown into into a pot that like nobody's really taking the time to tell compelling stories until you get to the indie titles which that's the mm-hmm. biggest recommendation that i would say is if you can Pick up the year, this year's uh, trades of these different indie titles and things like that and ex- explore yeah. that arena because that is where some of the richest stuff is coming out of. I was going to ask, is Last Ronin out on trade yet? Do you do you happen to know? Because I've heard a lot of good stuff about that one. Um, it is not, but most of the major um, outlets, you know, Midtown Comics, if you're mm-hmm. unaware, is a big is a big one pretty easily find the whole mini okay. series. It's only six issues. Oh, okay. Nice. So, cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, in the spirit of you bringing up star Trek next gen, uh, my wife and I just started watching new girl, which has, it's been off the air for a while. It is so funny. I've really liked it. Okay. Uh, so, I'm that's a, some of the, the, so those are some of the things that we've been thankful for this year, but we, Time moves on and we look forward to 2022. Joe, are there any things on the horizon, movies, books, comics, whatever shows that you are looking forward to? Uh, Yeah, I am looking forward to and I never thought I'd actually say this. um, The Flash movie. It's supposed to be coming out next year. It's also been supposed to be coming out for the last five years. So who knows? (laughs) But I'm interested to see what they do with that. Because for those Mm -hmm. of you that don't know, they're doing the flashpoint paradox and it's a little soon. And it, but as long as they actually follow through with whatever they set Mm -hmm. the table with, that is a great, you know, reset card. Yes. So especially with um, Michael Keaton coming back as Batman, Mm -hmm. like that, that to me is awesome in and of itself. That is is reason enough to go see that. But we were talking before about the Snyderverse and it it Mm -hmm. showcased Ezra Miller in a different light for me. And Mm -hmm. I was actually it was for the, the first time that I actually enjoyed Ezra Miller as the Flash. Yeah. Yes, I'm still not 100 percent sold on him. And that's not to say that I think it should have been Grant Gustafson. He does a fine job, too. But uh, I've I've only like the uh, slightly more interested in Ezra Miller now post uh, Snyder Cut. Yeah. So another one that I have to give it to DC for, you know, for as as ridiculous and disjointed as their their movie arm has been. I I I feel like Warner Brothers has been allergic to trying to make money with with the DC properties. (laughs) Um, But their presentation of of hype for um, the Batman for Robert Pattinson's Batman mm-hmm. um, actually got me interested. One of the first mm-hmm. um, arcs that I had ever read of Batman was Long Halloween. And that oh, okay. kind of oh. noir detective version of Batman, it's the same reason why, I'm, why I dug um, the 90s cartoon that, so much. Mm-hmm. That, to me, it makes me feel like I'm excited to see this version of the Batman. Um to see him presented in a certain kind of way. That is the movie I'm looking forward to the most in 2022. I'm excited for Morbius. I'm excited for, I'm actually excited for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 because the first one was, the first one was just good enough. Like it was just entertaining enough to hold me. And they got Idris Elba to do the voice of Knuckles. But uh, the Batman, I'm I was a child in the 90s. So Batman TAS is Batman. And for the first time in a very long time, I feel like my Batman is going to be on the screen again. I in the past year, I have screamed twice watching a trailer. One was for something that came up in No Way Home. And the other one was when Pattinson says, I am vengeance because I was fully anticipating I am Batman or maybe more accurately. Um, But 
hearing I am vengeance and my birthday's in March, which is when uh, the movie is set to release right now, barring any last minute things. It's supposed to come out in March. And so I am planning for the month of March, a big Batman palooza. You're going to hear all about it, Systematic Ecology listeners. Every time we talk, it's going to be, well, I watched this Batman movie or I'm reading this Batman series. So right. I'm very excited for that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm i one of those guys that I, I think each one of the iterations that we've seen of Batman has something for somebody. And mm-hmm. I think that it is a waste of time to sit and debate who's the best Batman because they're so totally different. You know, uh, a couple other things coming up in 2022. I'm looking forward to speaking of Miller. Uh, I know we're not supposed to like Frank Miller anymore, but he has a YA novel coming out on Cassie, the Robin. And I I don't know when it's supposed to come out, but I'm interested in it because that's a great series and also don't get a lot of additional material on her as a Robin. So I'm interested to see what that comes to be. Uh, Also, I know some people are terrified by some of the preliminary images that have come out, but y'all I'm ready for the live action Powerpuff Girls show. Like I, what? yeah, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I believe in CW. I know it's going to be mature unnecessarily, but that's how CW rolls. And I think we're a little overdue for a live action Powerpuff Girls. So go ahead. Go go ahead. (laughs) So I want you all to know, and Josh, leave my reaction in. I want you all to know (laughs) that that was or as organic as organic gets. I've not heard about any of that that you just really that you just hype the the Frank Miller book. Or the the live action Powerpuff uh, Girls show. I was really? a kid during the time that uh, I mean, trying to remember. I was I was young when the time that Powerpuff okay. Girls came out. So we all watched it. Whatever. Uh, that that to me isn't isn't the big deal. The fact that they're doing a live action Powerpuff Girls show is fast. On CW. On yeah. CW, and I'm pretty sure you are the only person who has ever said I have faith in CW. <laughs> I, I think that was a first, you know what I mean? Like, and, and yeah. that's coming from somebody who I've, I have unapologetically watched all of arrow. I have unapologetically sure. still keep up, keep up with flash and all of those kinds of things. Really? The only mm-hmm. show from CW I never really got into was Riverdale because like, I okay. you can't do I I grew up watch, reading the Sunday funnies and reading Archie comics and all that kind of stuff. I, I I'm not here for that. I'm not here for a teeny okay. angsty version of Archie. Um, but <laughs> the fact that, that it's them doing it, I almost wouldn't rather anybody else do that because they're so unafraid to go into mm-hmm. teen drama. And I feel like you'd have to have that CW flavoring to have exactly. a live action Powerpuff Girl show. Yeah, there's been a little bit of concern, I guess, since you've had missed all this. There's been a little bit of concern over some of the casting decisions and some of the early uh like images that have been released, but overall, like Google it, you'll be able to see all this stuff. Um, right. Yeah. I don't know when it's supposed to come out though, but yes, I do have, like, like I said, I haven't seen all of flash. I've watched just about all of arrow. I guess it's technically not CW, but I did watch Smallville back in the day. Um, I've seen most of legends of tomorrow. I, I, I think they are the one, like you said, I think they are the one to do this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm so I'm in the middle of uh, watching through all of Smallville for the first time. Um, Yeah, I'm on like season eight. I'm I'm right at the end. But yeah, I mean, and and back over to the other thing that you mentioned, uh, Frank Miller is doing a young adult book on Mm -hmm. on Cassie Kane Robin. Mm-hmm. That's a sentence that I'm not sure I would ever say in my life. <laughs> I am I simultaneously is- fascinated and horrified that <laughs> Frank Miller is doing a YA novel, let alone mm-hmm. one on a character like 
like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And some of DC's teen books I have read and they're pretty good. I've got one over here. It's a graphic novel on Raven making her a uh, Gen Z e-girl and it works. It totally works. They picked the right character to modernize as a modern day teen. Well, that's the thing, right? Like they because of the way that comics is done, especially with the big two and nobody really ages plus or minus. You have a whole crop of characters that, especially for our generation, they're most commonly thought of as teen versions of themselves. Beast Boy, Mm -hmm. Raven, you know, characters like that. So, yeah, I would definitely I could see that 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 would be uh, uh, the right character for something like that. Yeah, it's for sure. This has been a lot of fun. Was there any other uh, any other things you wanted to highlight for next year real quick? Yes. Um, non geek related stuff coming up, uh, coming up this year. Yeah. I have a, I've been working on this. Um, I've been working on this show idea of a, bringing together a panel of different Christians that from, from different points, points of view, perspectives, et cetera, et cetera. And, and just dissecting the real, in in the world and all of that kind of stuff and discussing the world in a way that's unapologetic and unafraid you know so this to me has been a huge a huge thing for this is kind of kind of where a lot of my broadcasting has mm-hmm. has been pointing in preparation for and things like that and so it's something it's a it's something that I am very excited to see come to fruition. That's awesome. Excited to hear, hear and see more of that in the future. Uh, non geek related for me, late spring is when baby will be here. Um, we're still waiting. I think next month is when we find out gender. So that way I don't have to keep saying baby and can actually say he or she. Um, and that, so that's late spring. We're trying to be intentional about not calling our child it. Um, so that is uh, late spring. And then early summer, we have tickets to go see AJR in concert. So that will probably actually be like the first thing we get to do post the first big thing we'll get to do post baby. So that'll be that'll be enjoyable. Yeah. Well, we we've had a lot of fun today. Just taking the time to be thankful. And also taking the time to look forward to what is ahead. Probably some of the things that we are going to be talking about here uh in the next year on systematic ecology but in the spirit of thankfulness uh i wanted to read it for us you know when you talk about thankfulness one of the best places to go in scripture is the book of psalms and i wanted to read very quickly for us psalm 9 verse 1 i will give thanks to the lord with my whole heart i will recount all of your wonders all of your wonderful deeds This is a season for thankfulness. And as Christians, we encourage thankfulness all year round. One thing I was doing today in between uh, doing stuff at work was spending a little bit of time meditating on this psalm and other verses in the psalms. And one thing that stood out to me was that all of these times, you know, David or whoever is talking about thankfulness and being expressing thankfulness to God. And a lot of times these instances of thankfulness are coupled with vocal things, singing, declaring, re, uh, recounting the ways, you know, it's very closely tied to being vocal. And so my encouragement to you all listening today as you're off to whatever Thanksgiving meal you're on for the day um, is this. It is one thing to have an attitude of thankfulness. We definitely should have an attitude and a position of thankfulness in our prayers and in our daily life. But it's another thing to do what we did today, to do what the Psalms encourage us to do and be vocal about those things. Words have power. Words have meaning. And to speak and express those thankfulness, those things that you are thankful for, is that much more powerful than just having the attitude. One of my favorite bands, weird tie in, one of my favorite bands is My Chemical Romance. And my gateway song was not Welcome to the Black Parade, shockingly. It was their song Sing. And in their song Sing is all about 
raising your voice, use your voice. So rather than using your social media to post memes and cat videos and angry things about this, that, and the other thing, use your voice for thankfulness. When you're praying, raise a voice of thanksgiving. And Joe, I don't know about you, but my singing voice isn't great. I kind of sound like Billy Corrigan with a head cold, but sing. Guys, guys, men listening to this show, sing. Use your voice. Declare the things that you are thankful for in your life to God and to those around you. Joe, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, um, it's fascinating when you take a dive into the science behind gratitude. There's a lot of science behind gratitude. It's almost like the Bible's telling the truth. Um, <laughs> I, I say that tongue in cheek, but there's a reason why there's so many different verses and so many different ways that we are told to be thankful. And I want to address the fact that not everybody is a huge fan of the holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Sure. It's not a great time for, for everybody. And, and to speak to anybody, regardless of where they're at, but really for people that might not naturally be cool with this, with this time of year, understand that when you are grateful for a thing, whatever the thing is, it makes you aware of that thing. Mm -hmm. It changes the way that you view other things. Because mm -hmm. if you, one thing leads to two things, leads to three things and so on and so forth, that eventually you realize, hey, I have a lot to be thankful for. It might not look like everybody yeah. else's. It might look specific to me, but it's always going to look specific to you. That's the deal. Sure. It's unique. You are unique. And so don't be afraid to allow yourself to be vulnerable in a way that's required when you're talking about something like gratitude. Because it's easy sure. to overlook the fact that there's an authenticity that has to come from that place of being real and being mm -hmm. open about what you have to be thankful for and, and what you've got going on. You know what I mean? So it's, it's more oh, yeah. than just, I'm, I'm thankful for mom and dad. I'm thankful for my family. Yeah. I'm thankful for this. Like really take the time as we round out this year and take some time one-on-one -on -one with God and, mm -hmm. and explore the things that you have to be thankful for, because we are coming off of a time where um, none of us went into 2020 at full health. And, sure. and to at the beating that we've taken over the last couple of years now has done a number on the collective hearts of the kingdom. Yeah. I know I've talked to enough people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of war wounds from the last couple of years, not to say from anything that we walked in with. So, it's it's okay. I want you to hear it's okay if you're coming in limping to this Thanksgiving. Yeah. A lot of us are coming into this Thanksgiving limping. Still take time to be in the presence of the Lord, to be in active communication with him like a friend. Remember, it doesn't need to be super religious. It doesn't need to be super structured, anything like that. And, mm -hmm. and just celebrate with God the things that can be celebrated for. And I promise you that you will see a paradigm shift start to take place in your mind mm -hmm. in ways that don't seem connected. Yes, I, uh, I would echo that by saying a chapel speaker at my college years ago said, look for the little moments of grace. Just these yeah. little instances. These are all silly things that we're talking about today. But you know what? We are genuine. These are things we're thankful for. These are things that for a moment took our mind off of all the limping we have been doing. And you're listening to a guy who works at a grocery store the right before Thanksgiving. I'm limping hard right now. But you know what? If anything, I can be thankful that I got to sit down and record this with one of my friends and share this time with you all. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, let's start wrapping this thing up. Joe, before we get out of here, you got any recommendations for people? 
Uh, yeah, I, I would absolutely recommend checking out, uh, a Star Trek next generation. If, if you have never seen it, 100% check it out. Um, B there's this podcast that I listen to, uh, called, uh, the, po- the power Rangers audio drama. It's a company that they've put out audio drama versions of a bunch of different stuff that okay. they're actually the first ones that got me introduced to long Halloween because they, they are, mm. they did a, an audio version of it and it's fantastic, but like any of their stuff, they have an X-Men one. They've got, they've got tons okay. of, uh, of different stuff. Absolutely. Check out the power Rangers one, but check them out. Um, in general, they've got several of them. Nice. Uh, for my recommendation, one thing that I have been thankful for recently is season two of the Animaniacs on Hulu. Man, watching, even though they're brand new episodes, watching the Animaniacs again is like wrapping up in a warm blanket. It's been really funny. Season one was a little better so far, uh, but I, I would definitely recommend checking out the Animaniacs. All right. All right. So where can people find you, Joe, if they wanted to catch some more of what you create? Um, you can find me on um, all the socials and anywhere that you find a, a podcast at uh, Buddy Walk with Jesus with my co-host Edgar. Nice. And uh, you can follow me, Brandon Knight, on TikTok and Instagram at just.brandon.k, or you can check out my podcast, My Seminary Life, where I talk about the things that I'm learning about in grad school right now. And you can find our profile on Facebook and Instagram at My Seminary Life Pod. And I think it goes without saying, but we're going to say it because that's what I just encouraged you all to do. Um, we are so thankful for you all listeners at home right now or in your car, wherever you are at right now. We are so thankful for you. You know, we're a little baby podcast still just a couple months in. And we are so thankful for the community that is already building on social media. We are so thankful for those of you who have been submitting ideas for episodes. We are thankful for those of you who are showing support with your wallet, even on Patreon. I don't think that we have a bad product at all, but it still blows me away that people are willing to give up us money to keep making this materials so thank you all so much for for investing yeah you guys are the reason why we get to keep doing what we love in this way you know otherwise we'd just be nerds talking into microphones so um seriously thank you i've I, yeah. i've been in this podcast game for several years now and i've never seen a community come come together in the way that you guys have and just just embrace a new show like you guys have Mm. so seriously thank you yes yes geeks will do geek things and we'll geek out and talk about stuff but to have you all as a part of this that's what makes this worth doing and remember we are all a chosen priesthood a geekdom of priests This was an Anazao Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazao Ministries podcast network.